In an earlier video, I described in some detail the impact that climate change is having on electric power generation. In this video, I will provide a brief survey of how climate change is impacting other critical infrastructure. Almost every type of modern infrastructure is impacted to some extent by climate change. In an earlier video, I covered the impact of climate change on electric power generation in detail, and I'll provide a link to that video at the end of this one. Climate change also is impacting the electric distribution system as well as electric generation. Problems in the electric grid always have been one of the causes of wildfires, though usually not one of the most frequent causes. However, with the advent of drought conditions made worse by climate change, electric distribution system failures in remote areas have been responsible for some exceptionally large wildfires. Climate change also is affecting transportation systems in several ways. For example, sea level rise has had an impact on major shipping ports. More intense storms driven by climate change have caused major damage to roads and bridges, as well as to subway systems. Likewise, these more intense storms frequently have overwhelmed existing flood control systems. Domestic water supply systems have been impacted both by drought made worse by climate change and flooding caused by climate change. In Alaska, parts of Canada and parts of Russia, climate change is causing the permafrost to melt. This is damaging buildings, roads, bridges, and other infrastructure. In urban areas, climate change helps to create heat islands that impact infrastructure as well as creating more dangerous conditions for residents. In areas where wildfires are a problem, utility companies are dealing with grid problems in the short run by shutting off the power when the fire danger is high. In the longer term, some utilities are working on moving their distribution lines underground in these areas. The first option can leave large numbers of customers without electric power for days on end, while the second option is exceptionally expensive. In addition to more frequent and dangerous wildfires, climate change is responsible for more intense storms that frequently affect the power lines and cause power outages that can last for several days. While moving power lines underground, can help the reduced outages from snow, ice, and wind. This may not help in storms that cause extensive flooding. We know that transportation systems contribute to climate change through the emission of greenhouse gases, and several methods to reduce the emissions caused by the transportation sector have been proposed and are being considered. But regardless of those changes, transportation infrastructure will always be with us. So the challenge that we face is how to construct roads, bridges, tunnels, rail systems, seaports, and airports that will be resilient to the effects of climate change. Sea level rise, intense pre precipitation and flooding, and rising temperatures associated with climate change all have an impact on transportation infrastructure. Sea level rise by itself generally does not have a major effect on ports. However, sea level rise combined with more intense storms can result in unprecedented storm surges that can cause major damage to port facilities. In addition, many of the world's major airports are sited close to shorelines and will be, in, will be subject to increased disruption from the effect of storm systems that often are most intense near the shoreline. Intense storms and flooding also can have a major impact on roads and rail systems. Urban subway systems are particularly vulnerable to damage and service interruptions from flooding. Higher global temperatures leading to major heat waves can have an impact on rail and bridge systems and on airports. As temperatures rise, planes require longer runways in order to take off safely. 
In some parts of the world, climate change has exacerbated drought conditions, while in others, it has contributed to more intense precipitation events. Flood control systems that were engineered decades ago often are proving inadequate to cope with the intense precipitation events now being experienced in many parts of the world. Redesigning and, and constructing flood control systems capable of handling the increasing number of extreme precipitation events will be very costly and in some areas nearly impossible. The impact of climate change on water supply systems has been severe. In areas where climate change has caused in extreme precipitation events and flooding, domestic water su uh, supply systems often have experienced major impacts from levels of contamination that are too high for water treatment plants to handle. When this happens, users often are required to boil water for domestic use or to, or to rely on bottled water until contamination levels drop to a point where the water treatment plants can function properly. In some extreme cases, such as the recent events in Jackson, Mississippi, severe flooding caused major damage problems for a domestic water supply system that already was struggling to provide adequate water for domestic uses. In areas where climate change has contributed to severe drought conditions, water supply systems for both domestic users and agricultural users have been impacted. For example, in the southwestern part of North America, drought conditions are threatening to reduce major reservoirs on the Colorado River to dead pool status. This is affecting the domestic water supply for the Las Vegas, Nevada area and may require cuts to irrigation water that usually is delivered to Riverside and Imperial counties in Southern California. Drought conditions in California have become so severe that significant cutbacks to both agricultural and domestic water uses are now in place. To cope with this situation, studies have been carried out that indicate that significant improvements in the water supply can be had by covering the canals that supply both irrigation and domestic water with solar panels. These studies suggest that covering the canals with solar panels would reduce water loss to evaporation significantly while at the same time contributing a significant amount of clean electrical energy to the state. A small pilot project, ha project has been funded to test this idea on a section of a canal that delivers irrigation water. The Arctic region of the Earth has been warming at a much faster rate than the rest of the planet in the past few decades. And this is causing the permafrost to melt. Studies indicate that even if significant reductions in greenhouse gas emissions are achieved, the Arctic permafrost will continue to melt. As this happens, essentially all the infrastructure, including roads, pipelines, and buildings for the 3.4 million people living in the Arctic regions of the United States, Canada, and Russia will be affected. Damage to the infrastructure serving this region will both be both difficult and costly to repair. Climate change also has been causing more frequent and more intense heat waves in recent decades. During heat waves, urban areas almost always are warmer than surrounding suburbs and rural areas. Urban areas often are seven or more degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the, than the surrounding rural areas during the late afternoon during heat waves. And the urban areas generally do not cool off as much at night as the surrounding rural areas. This urban heat island effect raises the danger for heat-related illnesses significantly for city dwellers during these more frequent and intense heat waves. Several strategies are available to reduce urban heat island effects. They include planting more trees along urban streets, installing so-called green roofs where feasible, these use re rooftop vegetation to reduce heat absorption by buildings, 
Another option for buildings where green roofs are not feasible is to use roofing material that can reflect a significant amount of incoming solar radiation. These so-called cool roofs can reflect as much as 25% of incoming solar radiation. In addition, additionally, new paving materials now are available that can reflect more incoming solar radiation than traditional blacktop paving. Cities also are modifying their building codes to ensure that new buildings are designed in ways to minimize heat absorption during the day. Thanks for watching. I hope that you have found this brief survey of climate change impacts on infrastructure informative. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments section and I will do my best to answer them. For those of you who are interested, I have included below a link to my video on the impact of climate change on electric power generation. And if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe.